Was Judas saved? No, he wasn't. How do I know he wasn't saved? John 17, verse 12. Our Lord in his high priestly prayer pretty much says that he didn't lose anyone that the Father gave him except the son of perdition. Son of perdition, son of destruction. John 17, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you, have, you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. The phrase son of perdition is only used twice in the New Testament. Twice in the New Testament. Once here of Judas and another time of the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, the man of sin. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. But you guys got to listen and be attentive to see where I'm going with this because you're going to be in for a shock and surprise. Just be patient. Help me to help you and listen. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. This is used of the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, the man of Satan, filled with Satan, empowered by Satan, the Antichrist. Here it is. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. There you go. The phrase son of perdition is only used twice. One of the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, who is filled with Satan, possessed with Satan, whom Satan works through, meaning he belongs to Satan. In other words, this phrase shows you that like the Antichrist, Judas belonged to Satan. And like the Antichrist, Judas was destroyed. Now, for the rest of you, let's go to John 6, 70 to 71. Now read with me, guys. Jesus answered them, did I not choose you the 12 and one of you is a devil? See, I chose you the 12, but one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for was he who would betray him being one of the 12. So we see here, Judas is a devil. He belongs to Satan. He's a son of perdition. Now, with that said, does that mean Jesus never desired the salvation of Judas? Does that mean Jesus never wanted Judas to be saved? Does that mean Jesus did not love Judas? No. Are you guys ready for a shock now? Are you guys now ready to for me to show you? The same Jesus shows he loves Judas, desired Judas' salvation and glorification, and even told Judas that he was dying on the cross for his sins. Matthew 19, 28. Let's read. So Jesus said to them, watch here now. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when a son of man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones. That's the 12 apostles, one of whom is Judas. You who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones. That includes you, Judas, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, my goodness. Folks. Twelve thrones, twelve apostles. Twelve thrones, twelve apostles. One of whom is Judas. Do you see what Jesus told Judas? My desire for you, Judas, is that you sit on one of the twelve thrones with me in the regeneration. When I restore the earth and I come in glory, you who follow me will sit on one of the twelve thrones judging Israel because that's what I desire for you. That's what I want for you, Judas. Okay. Was Jesus lying? Or did Jesus mean it from his heart, because he's God and cannot lie, that Judas, I want you with me in the regeneration on one of the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now let's go. Let's go to Luke 10, 17 and 20. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 70 returned, one of whom is Judas. Judas came with the 70 saying, Lord, demons submit themselves to me when I use your name, Lord. Now notice what Jesus says in Luke 10, 18 to 20. Pay attention, specifically verse 20. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you, he's speaking to all the disciples. Judas is there. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, meaning evil spirits, demonic spirits, and over all. The, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be any means by any means hurt you now watch here nevertheless do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven okay luke 10 20 one more time 
Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names, everyone present, Judas included, are written in heaven. Do you see the heart of Jesus even for Judas, whom he knew was the son of Satan would betray him? Jesus is telling Judas, I love even you. I desire your salvation. I even have your name written because my desire is for you to be saved. But unfortunately, being a son of Satan, you will abandon me, reject me, and betray me, and not return to me, and go to your destruction. But then it gets even better, because then Jesus tells Judas, even on the cross, when I die, I die for your sins, but you don't benefit from it because you don't receive, because you don't believe truly. Luke 22, 19 and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Notice, no qualification. All of you here, this body represents that I'm breaking my death, that I'm going to die for you, okay? This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now notice verse 20. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Doesn't qualify it. He doesn't say, not all of you, some of you, most of you, all of you except one. This cup is the new cup of my blood shed for you. And who was there when he said, for you? Luke 22, 21 and 23. Notice who was there. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. So Judas is here with me as I said these words. And truly the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do these things. Did you catch it? This, this bread is my body broken for you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you. And yet the hand of the betrayer is here on the table. So wait, Jesus, when you said that, you're including Judas? So Judas heard you speak to all of them, him included, saying to all of them, him included, I'm breaking my body for you. You too, Judas? I'm shedding my blood for you, you too, Judas, and yet one of you is going to betray me. In other words, what Jesus is showing is the audacity, the travesty, the blasphemy, that even though I'm going to die for this one and shed my blood for this one to procure his redemption, showing my love for him to the very end, he will still betray me anyway and spurn my love and reject me in spite of all I've done for him. Did you catch it? In other words, you're supposed to see the travesty, the audacity, the blasphemy of a man hearing Jesus say to him and looking right in his eyes, I break my body for you. I shed my blood for you. Yet nevertheless, the hand of the betrayer is on the table with me. That's how you're going to repay me. That's how you're going to respond to my love, that I love you to the point of dying for you. And how do you respond? You spit in my face and you sell me for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, Judas, what more could I have done for you? It's touching, isn't it? So why, why then, Jesus, did you die for Judas knowing he betray you? Let me explain the logic in that. Number one, to show that Jesus truly loves all his creatures, even those who reject him and condemn themselves to hell. And number two, to show how righteous his judgment is when he judges them in spite of all he has done for them. In other words, do you now blame Jesus for consigning Judas to hell in light of what Judas did? You understand? This now shows how just God is in his judgment. That I did this all for you, Judas. You slept next to me. I hugged you. I kissed you. I fed you. I clothed you. I protected you. I even gave you power to do miracles in my name, to raise the dead in my name, to cast out demons in my name. And then I shed my blood for you. And this is how you <clears throat> repay me. Do you understand? So now when you see it from that perspective, is Christ thoroughly just in condemning Judas to everlasting destruction? See, it's even moving me in my spirit. It's moving me in my spirit, right? Because I can understand when Jesus is looking at him. See, it's moving in my spirit. <clears throat> He's looking at him. And he knows. You know what? You know why it's moving me? Let me break this down. Let me bring out the implication. Guys, let me bring out the implication. From day one, when Judas came 
Jesus looked at him. See, it's actually moving me. <clears throat> it's moving me, my spirit. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, take over for the glory of Christ. He looks at a man, and Jesus knew from the beginning, this is my betrayer. This is the one who's going to betray me for 30 pieces of silver. This is the one who's going to be filled with Satan. And he's going to hand me over to the Jews to hand me over to the Romans. Because of his betrayal, they will beat me to a bloody pulp and whip me to the point of death. Spit on me, beat me with rods, place a crown of thorns and then nail spikes in my hands and feet. Hanging on the cross, gasping for life. It's all because of this man who's going to betray me. And he knew it. And you know what he did? Welcome, Judas. Welcome. Sure, you can follow me. <laughs> Come on. Of course, Judas. You're more than welcome to be part of my apostolic band. And all he did for all those years of ministry was love him, <clears throat> bless him, be gracious to him, kind to him, Provide for him, feed him, clothe him. And even if you go to John, if you go to John chapter 12, it says that Judas was in charge of the money bag. Guys, let me blow your mind away a little more. John 12 says that Jesus even entrusted Judas to the money bag. You know what that money bag means? It means that Jesus was not ashamed to collect donations for ministry. Guys, let this blow you away. Jesus, who's God Almighty, humbled himself to such an extent that he depended on the financial support of his followers to keep him and his followers in ministry. Do you know that? How many of you guys didn't know that? Don't take my word for it, John 12. And you know what John 12 says? It says that Judas used to help himself to the money. He would steal from the money bag. But here's what's mind-blowing. Jesus knew that Judas was of the devil. Jesus knew that Judas was stealing from the money bag. Jesus knew Judas would betray him, and he never said a word to him, never rebuked him, never embarrassed him. He let him do what he did till the very end when he betrayed him. In fact, it's even more mind-boggling that in John 13, if you read the chapter, it said Jesus got off the table, removed his robe, put a towel, and he started washing the feet of the disciples, and he washed the dirty feet of Judas, who in a, in a moment would be dwelt by Satan, knowing that he's going to betray me tonight. Tonight he's going to betray me, and he still washed his feet. You see how amazing his love is? If I knew this man was going to betray me, if I knew this man was stealing, I would insult him, I'd ridicule him, I may even beat him to a bloody pulp, or he'd have to beat me up. Jesus knew this is my betrayer who's going to betray me for 30 pieces of silver. He's going to steal from the money of the ministry, people giving from their money to my ministry. He's going to steal. That's okay. I'm going to love him till the end. And that's what he did. And just to confirm that Jesus, who's God Almighty, Almighty, Humble himself to depend on the financial support of people. Go to Luke 8, verses 1 to 3. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the good, glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, right? And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chuzza, Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. Did you catch it? Many others who were providing financially for Jesus and his followers to do ministry. Right? But who was in charge of the money bag where they would put in coins? Judas. And what Judas would do, read John 12. John says, not me. He would then take some of that money and put it in his pocket. Oh, yeah. $50? Let me take five. Uh, Judas, how much did they put in? Lord, 45, little did he realize that's God who knows exactly how much they put in the bag. Judas, so it's only 45? Yes, Lord, only 45. Okay. 
So why it's touching my heart. <clears throat> See why it's moving me? He knew this man was lying. He knew this man would betray him. And he still loved him. In fact, he loved him with such a love that Judas guilt killed him. He, he took the money and gave it back. He goes, I have betrayed. I have betrayed innocent blood. I cannot live with myself. I betrayed the man who loved me, who washed my feet, who entrusted me with the money bag, who hugged me, who fed me, who clothed me, and who gave me power to do miracles in his name. And I betrayed him. I cannot live with myself anymore. I can't do it. And he killed himself. Luke 22, 47 to 48. And while he was still speaking, behold, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the 12, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. Now watch Jesus' words. Now imagine you're Judas. You go kiss your master and you hear Jesus looking at you and he says, Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying? The son of man with a kiss. Can you imagine Jesus looks at you and he says those words? He goes, Judas, you betray the son of man with a kiss after all I've done for you, Judas. He doesn't yell at him. He doesn't scream at him. <clears throat> he kills him with kindness. Ah, oh, Judas. You betray the Son of Man with a kiss. You see why it moves me? Oh, wow. It moves me, right? <clears throat> when I read Judas' story, I see the heart of a broken God. You understand why it moves me? This is the creator of heaven and earth who doesn't need anyone. And he came on earth as a man and he's looking at Judas and he says to Judas, what more could I have done for you, O Judas? What more could I have done to love you? And this is how you repay me. This is how you repay me, Judas. You, you broke my heart. He broke my heart. Did I not love you? Did I not care for you? Did I not feed you? Did I make you feel any less than the, of the others? Did I discriminate and make you feel less loved than the others? Judas, I loved you. I adored you. <clears throat> I gave you power to do miracles, and I even came to die for you, and yet you betray me with a kiss, Judas.